Hey guys, Jim Bounds at Motorhome Rehab Ranch, <clears throat> and if you're watching this, you are on Patreon. Thank you very much. We're doing a change with Motorhome Rehab Ranch, is that we're directing primary use to Patreon. When we started, we needed YouTube to, to, uh, to get us uh, an audience. But what I find is we have a niche business, and our audience is here, or our audience will look for us. And in that situation, <clears throat> YouTube is going to tell people about us. We'll have some videos there, introductory videos, maybe first episode type of stuff. But everything will be on Patreon. Uh, it will start on Patreon and end on Patreon, okay? So... In that you're here, thank you very much. <clears throat> and to reiterate for you guys that were on YouTube and anybody else that kind of fell into to us and found us, <laughs> <clears throat> if you go to Google, come on in here. So you go to Google and you put in, it's your Google search, you could put in Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-O-N dot um, patreon.com there it is right there <clears throat> here's their home page and when you get to their home page this is what you're going to get or something like this it says find a creator you see that find a creator All right so now you come into the keyboard you hit motorhome m-o-t-o-r-h-o-m-e rehab ranch but look here when you hit Motorhome, we're already up right there. Motorhome Rehab Ranch, GMC Motorhome Restoration and Repair. Click right there. And here's the site. <clears throat> For you guys that uh, 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 may or may not know about this, when you hit the main page, right at the bottom here, it says Home, Collections, and About. You see? Hit Collections. Now, if you were... Not a uh, ranch hand. <clears throat> when you hit collections, you'll get about 15 or 20 areas like suspension. Okay, when you hit suspension, there are many, many videos. This is our database. It's much easier to get to than you had before. All right. Now, if you're uh, a ranch hand, when you hit the bottom, it will say see more. Uh, uh, see more. Click there and our entire database is there. If you're not a member, you still have access to a lot of stuff. Okay? <clears throat> like fuel tanks. I just hit that one by accident. But when you come to the page now, when you're on the main page, scroll down. Wait a minute. On the main page, let me get back. There we go. Find the creator. M O T O R H O M E, right there. <clears throat> now we're back on the front page. Now, just scroll down. If you'd like to be a ranch hand, it shows you how to do it. So as soon as you go down, you will see our latest. Go away. You'll see our latest video right there. All right? So everything from this point on, ranch hands. All of our videos from this point on <clears throat> will be hosted on the actual Patreon page. The YouTube page will also have videos, but it will be more inviting folks to come to our Patreon page and talking about um, some basic videos, some basic how-tos and things. But if you want to dig deeper, everything will be on the Patreon page as before. The search, the collections page, uh, when you hit collections, is much more uh, uh, broken down. It's much easier to find some things. So let's all start working there. All right? Enough of that paid political announcement stuff. We are today <clears throat> 39 degrees. <clears throat> I had to take a, a screenshot. 39 degrees in Florida with humidity of stupid 
uh, is cold, gentlemen. Uh, I was able to come in here this morning and uh, get the furnace on. I've got it up to 72 degrees. Mr. Sun is coming out and really helping us a lot. Um, what is... Oh. Uh, I've got a customer. I'll call you right back. Don't go away. I'll call you back. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry about that. That's what we do every day. What? Talk to me. Hey. Okay. So, what we're going to do here for everyone, for the YouTubers and for all of uh, the rest of you, uh, we're all Patreon people now, right? Ranch hands and even those that are thinking about it. All right. So look over here. <clears throat> we had our panels, and I've got them fitted. They're all fitted in all the way around. You say, well, the last one we did, remember I did this panel, and I told you to use the same process for this panel, and the upper panel, and the lower panel. Okay? All right. Come on over here. Let me show you some pictures that of some steps that we went through this is a single sheet of eighth inch cabinet grade plywood laying down with the it's a bc plywood you want to put the c up because you're working on top of it all right nice place you can just put a normal table under it because you're not pushing down you're not hammering things what you need is a wide surface for your material to lay out and to cut do you see here this is the back panel right here. The material was cut and was glued down to it. There's your drop. Spray gun. I tell you guys, that little inexpensive uh, spray gun at Harbor Freight, think about this. When this panel, when, I mean, when this uh, uh, thing is full of glue, you say, oh, it's going to dry out. No, no, no. If the top <coughs> is on, put a piece of tape over the top. <laughs> If air cannot get into it, from the nozzle tip to here, if no air gets in there, it will not clog up. I use this to spray out, what, a week later. No problem at all. Now, those, those two pieces ended up to be 48 inches. The problem with 48 inches is the material was ragged it was a 48 inch wide piece of material but it was ragged on the ends so what are you going to do I took a piece of stainless steel wrapped it around the trim right there which gave me two inches gave me an inch each side so i wrapped the, the uh, material wrapped it glued it on so i have a silver spot in the middle which will go you'll see it goes very nicely with uh with uh, the uh, trim piece. Okay. So you lay it, put this, this, the silver, the stainless steel piece, fold your material over and glue it down. And then you take the second one and you put the second one on there and it looks like that. That's what you do when, you're, when your material doesn't fit. All right. We've got here, this is the back side, already produced, laying out the material for the other ones. Oops. This is going to be our logo, guys, by the way. This is the logo that you remember, but this, we've got a, a, a ranch hand that does this stuff. He's going to put this right there, and that is going to be our new logo. This right there. Let me know what you think. All right, so... This is a backdrop as to what I've done. Now, come on back over here to the window. Now, if you make it right, it pops right into place. Right here has this panel is tied together with this panel. It's stuck into each side of here, and this is covered with the material, as you can see right there. Okay, Here's your stainless steel strip to gimp because it didn't have the long enough material but it looks nice to this this uh this uh piece right here 
See? Looks real nice. <clears throat> right here, this lower piece is attached again with one of these, like that, right in here. And then on the back side, right here, all the way up and down, is a piece of this covered with the material all the way to trim it out. All right? So that's what this stuff was used for. This is what's left of a 96 inch piece doing one panel here and the sides. Okay? This was $3.48. All right. <clears throat> Here's the exciting part. You come up here and you look here. Everything's fine. But when this is on here, you can see stuff back there. See what I mean? You can see stuff. And if you come over and look at the front side in there, right in here, you can see a lot of things in here. Now, I had some folks ask, well, what do I do with the front window, the front A-frame window with this plastic piece here? All right? So come on back. This is what... This is what this uh, this trim is for, okay? Now, you look at the profile of this real quick. <clears throat> you see you got a hollow bulb rubber piece that gimps like that. You've got in here little metal pieces. I call them grabber doodles. Lined up all in here are these little grabbers. You can push it in, and it has strength, and it stays closed. <clears throat> this material I, I found at uh, Granger. The thing I like the most about this material is this large bulb seal. You say, what's it for? All right. You know how you looked in here, right? You put this right there on the edge. Little grabbers grab the end of your your wood. And it goes in there like this. And yes, I pre-cut I pre-cut the length of it to fit, but take a look. <clears throat> now and you look back there, what do you see? Nothing. Looks nice and clean. That's your finish edge. Okay? Now, come back. <clears throat> Remember how we had this piece here? We wanted to lock this panel into this panel. And we cut it right where this panel went into it. <clears throat> this is that aluminum quarter-inch divider bar that I've used at co-op for 30 years. Classco coaches use this. You turn it around, cut the edges, bevel them back. Come on in here. I'm going to show you this. <clears throat> I cut this back, and I, I used a vibrating saw to cut that little slot in there. Okay, all right, now, now we take this, oh. uh. pull this up first, because I want that to cover the end of that. Now, pinch this together. That holds it in place. Now you bring the bulb trim seal over. Boom. There it is. There's your finished product. Now, if we ever needed to pull this panel back out, you just pull this up, pull that out, this panel comes out. That's the value of this bulb trim seal. Now, say, 
Well, right here I can see. When you look here, you can see all along in here. All right. <clears throat> Again, bulb seal trim to the rescue. I'm going to offset it a little bit. Well, actually, yeah. I can go right to it because that'll hold it right there in the middle. Now, the nice part right here when it comes up to this divider bar, this bulb trim seal will open up. Remember the little grabber doodles? It'll open up so it'll stay there. Very nice. Uh. Just come on down with it. It really grabs. <clears throat> yeah. We get down to this divider bar. Again, it'll go right over it. <clears throat> Take a look over here at this divider bar. See where it comes together, how clean that is. Nice edge finish there. Can't see behind it. So you can't hear, but when you do that, there it is. There's your finish. Now you see that little silver part there. You might want to shoot it with a little food black paint, a little trim black paint. But as we come around, just got to push it in. Come back. Now, see how this is floppy? We're going to take a rivet put right there to hold that in like that and so we cut this just right so the screen will still fit right in there all right so we're going to have a rivet here we'll have a rivet here to hold that in like that <clears throat> but that'll be the only two rivets to cut out if you need to take all this stuff out and you want to think about having to take this out for some reason why i don't know but you it's it's a great idea again we're building this in sections and this is the finish of section one or the upper the uh, uh upper panel in the front There it is. All right. So, and I say so in a very positive way. Sometimes you may want to give a little hammer. <clears throat> There's your finish around the window. And in the front, in the A-frame, that trims that out nice. These divider bars link your pieces together. Now, I have pattern. Remember, our first pattern was this piece. From this pattern, we get the height and what that piece looked like in between. In between, we cut, fit, cover, and install. One piece at a time. All right. This is your vibrating saw. Real nice for this for this delicate plastic because it uh, cracks and things like that. If you get in there with a big saw or start beating on it, these are very very delicate. Uh, this one roll, this one twenty five foot roll, did. This window did this piece, and I have about a six foot piece left over. This was about $47. <clears throat> All right.
I would call this the end of this episode because <laughs> this is the upper first section. The next section we're going to go after is going to be uh, uh, over there. Now, the question was, what am I going to do to finish the window? Now, if you remember, the window looked <coughs> like this one. This really pretty wood frame. And I'm going to keep this. So as I'm showing you guys the, uh, the galley over there, I'm going to be finishing this off. And I've got some new ideas. I really like the way this looks. And it's warm. But it's not... I don't know, it's more like a guy thing. <laughs> so I've got an, an idea to update this where everybody will think that looks really nice. Still going to keep this, but I'll show you what I'm talking about. This is a great idea about, the great thing about these, these coaches, you can come up with all kinds of ideas to put things together. Uh, I don't know if, if folks have used this bold trim seal in... RV application, but we sure did. All right. Well, look. Thanks for your uh, thanks for your support. Thanks for coming, and watching this whole series of how to do this. If you got the basic idea. We're going to go on from here. And for you YouTube guys, come to Patreon, Patreon.com. And if you really like it and you think that this is worth it, become a ranch hand. All right. We got great things planned for this year. I'm glad you're with me. And we'll see you then.